Okay, so now that we have our 3D world set up to our single image, we're going to go ahead and add in the shot of Haley. You might have seen her in uh, some videos of Final Cut King. And uh, here we have a shot that we took together in Boulder. We're going to add that shot in, make our res resolution full so that we can really key her out. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this. Basically, you're just going to use a mask to rotoscope around the person that you're adding in. You do that by hitting the G button. And once we have our masked out, we're going to make our feather up to 8. Um, and here we have her added in. We're going to go ahead and import another file. Since we had her mouth moving in the shot, we took a video of her opening her mouth um, in the same position. So we're going to open, import that shot and uh, when you're shooting this you've got to make sure it's at the same exact angle that you did the picture at. So you basically don't move the camera at all. We have here you can see a nice video of her just sitting there opening her mouth um, and her eyes. So we're going to go layer pre-compose after we have that um, new video when we have her image selected and um, we're going to open up that pre-composed file and then add in the video to that new composition. We're going to drag it out so that it fits perfectly right on top. And um, that looks pretty good there. What we're going to do now is select the file and put a mask just around the part of her face that moves. So hit the G button and mask just around the face. It's good to put the mask around dark areas or contrasting areas so that it's not as easily visible. Um, so again, you hit the G button to do this. And then once you have the mask completed around her face, you um, will kind of feather it out a little bit just to make sure it mixes in nicely. So we're going to go to the mask, feather it out, just probably about four pixels or so. Looks pretty good. We're going to go back to full res and check it out. That looks pretty good. It mixes in fairly well. We're going to now render out the face movement and uh, make sure that it all looks good. All right, let's take a look at the render here. The face looks like it is part of the image, which is exactly what we're going for. So we can go ahead and move on to making the body as a whole look a little bit more real. Um, what we're going to do is add a puppet to her body by hitting the puppet tool here on the toolbar and adding puppet axes to different parts of her body. Let's add them at her, at her arms and at the um, axes that would normally be on her body like her shoulders, her hip, her waist, and head and neck. Um, the legs are together so it's going to be a little bit more difficult to add multiple puppet so we're just going to put one there and now let's move to the end of the shot and we're going to go ahead and keyframe the puppet points just moving them will automatically add new points so let's just go ahead and make slight adjustments here don't want anything to be too drastic because we don't want to deform the body but um, doing this will really give the feel of motion and make your image look a lot more like a video rather than a still image. So let's go ahead and move these around a little bit. Just kind of eye it for each individual project. Make sure that they look very natural. And let's go ahead and just solo this so that we can render it out quickly. And that looks pretty good. We can see just slight movement in the arm the basic animation looks natural so we're good to go from there. Let's unsolo this layer and we're going to make it 3D now so that we can put it into our, the 3D world we've just made. So let's go back to our two views so we can see where the layer has been moved to. We're going to take this shot of Haley and move it into the composition where we want it to be. Let's move it closer to the camera here and we're going to rotate it after moving it right in front of the camera so that it faces towards the camera. You can see that the new layer is dark and that's because right now we have shadows on it. So we're going to take this off in a bit but go ahead and move it right in front of here. You can see the camera on the left side and we're taking our new layer, rotating it with a W button here so that it's faced straight towards the camera. 
Let's go ahead and make it a little smaller. We'll hit the S button with the composition layer selected and make it smaller. And now we're going to go back to our single view. Take a look here. And it's a little bit high, so we're going to move it down a little bit. Just a little bit of rotation here. Move it a little bit to the left. And now we can take off of the material settings that are making it so dark. So let's go to accept lights and turn it off here and accept shadows and turn it off as well. Okay, and so remember for this type of effect, you can really use any photo or video that you have. Um, we're going to take the position and animate it just slightly so it looks as though she is either rising or sinking very slowly as we dolly in with the camera. I'm going to make her a little bit bigger. And let's take a look here. We're going to take our depth of field under the camera options and turn it on. And we're going to take the aperture and set it up to 445 pixels just so that we can tell where our focus point is. So we can see she's very blurry right now, so we need to change our focus point. We're going to set a keyframe here because we want her to come into focus while she starts off out of focus. We can see that the back walls are in focus right now. But we're going to change the focus point to about 1,000 pixels, and we can see that that makes her in focus. With each project, it's going to be a little different depending on where your subject matter is. But she looks very in focus there. The dolly moves in, so as the camera gets closer to her, the focus is going to get out of sync so we're gonna as the camera moves in we're gonna change the focus to say focused on her so let's go ahead and move the focus distance to let's try 675 and that looks pretty good right there so as the camera is moving in we also see the focus is being pulled to stay on her so we start off with focus on the back wall then it switches to her after about a second and then it stays on her as we continue the dolly in. And so now we have opened the composition of the layer that is Haley and we're going to add an adjustment layer and add a fast blur to this top adjustment layer and we're going to set the fast blur to about 22. What we're doing here is because she is perpendicular to us her back legs would actually not be quite as in focus as the front of her because that's where we're focused on. So we're adding a fake depth of field here by setting a mask by hitting the G button and adding a fast blur to her legs. We're going to go to the mask settings and feather it out a little bit so that it gradually gets in and out of focus. And let's take a look. That's not bad. We are going, as you can see, her back legs here are now out of focus where the front of her is in focus. We're going to set it to about 18, so not quite as drastic. Make the feather a little bit more. And now we're going to go back to our original composition, and you can see that the front of her is more in focus now than the back legs, just making it a lot more realistic. We're going to take a new layer solid, and we're going to add an optical flare to this. An optical flare is a plugin from Video Copilot, videocopilot.net. This plugin moves in 3D space with the camera, so it helps to add a third dimension to your shot. Let's change the composite mode to add. And I, for this particular shot, I used the digital sun preset inside of the optical flares plugin. Hit OK. And we're going to change it to 3D source type so that as the camera moves, so does the flare. We're going to change the Z position to 100 so that it moves farther back as if it were actually in the shot. We're going to change the Y, Z position so that we can see it in the shot. Let's go back to the first frame and just move it around to where we want it to be. I liked it back towards that wall. So let's put it there. And now that optical flare is going to look like there's an actual light in the shot. Finally, we're going to go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and add curves to the shot. So in your effects bar, type in curves and drag that onto the adjustment layer. We're just going to adjust it so that the darks are a little bit darker and the brights are a little bit brighter. Let's go ahead and render out the final comp here and see what we've got. Alright, this is VFX Bro with another tutorial in After Effects. 
light projection.